Thank you very much. Thanks for doing this. I think um, particularly as we see sea level rise accelerating, uh, our coastal states have a real uh, sense of urgency about making sure that we can work effectively, timely, and fairly with the Army Corps of Engineers. And I would reiterate what I have told this committee before, which is that the uh, flooding funding uh, of the Army Corps of Engineers tends to be heavily, heavily, heavily biased towards upland, inland river flooding. Uh, there have been years in which for every hundred dollars spent on upland and inland flooding, one dollar was spent on coastal flooding. And when you look at what climate change portends for coasts, when you look at what our map in Rhode Island shows our coast is going to look like in the decades ahead, um, this is a very, very serious problem, and we need to make sure that the Army Corps is going to be responsive to it. Let me particularly welcome uh, Brenna Haas here because he was kind enough to have dinner with Senator Cassidy and myself when I visited Louisiana, what, four years ago now, to uh, look at the uh, work going on down there to respond to Louisiana's rather spectacular loss of property to sea level rise. Um, and I was grateful for his time and expertise then, and I'm grateful, sir, for your time and expertise now. It's good to see you again. I hope all is well. Um, we've heard about the sponsor's share requiring a certain amount of investment and risk, cost overruns adding further potential investment and risk, maintenance and operations being delegated to the sponsor, adding further financial exposure, and liability opening up an unknown can of uh, potential risk worms. Um, in addition to that, it strikes me that even with all of those difficulties, if you could plan in an orderly way through time, <clears throat> what an Army Corps project was going to look like and how it was going to roll out, that would make it a lot easier on the local sponsors. My experience has been that the timing of Army Corps projects is very much um, also um, uncertain often uh, and certainly unknown when you try to begin. And so you have the additional variable of not knowing when you're going to have to spend the money, in addition to not knowing how much you're going to have to spend in all of those four areas. Is that an observation that is unique to Rhode Island, or is that an observation that you've seen in your worlds as well? Mr. House, let me start with you. Uh, the short answer to the question is, is uh, no, it is not just an observation from Rhode Island. It's certainly something that, that we've experienced as well. Um, the, the win, again, is an extremely important factor in all of this and, and, and gets back, I guess, to the theme that I mentioned earlier, really, which is, is predictability and certainty on, on all of these things. Um, and with, 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 with less predictability comes less, um, uh, less certainty that we're going to be able to be good partners and to deliver what we have agreed to deliver on. So, no, that is something that we certainly have experienced in Louisiana. You've mentioned um, that when the Corps is a partner in a project, the Corps can seem inflexible and overly committed to the status quo. I think that's a very important signal, particularly when the future is unknown. You don't know how quickly things are going to roll out. It can be very hard to get into the core bureaucracy and get real responsible answers on any kind of a, a reliable or timely basis. Now, the last thing I'll mention, um, I see my friend Dan Sullivan here who does not quite have this exact problem, but um, small states and communities that have big projects. The other question here is what I think banks would call leverage. If you're the state of California, if you're the state of Texas, if you're the state of New York, um, and there's a very significant Army Corps project that goes in and you're the sponsor, the non-federal sponsor, then how that turns out as a percent of your state's budget or a local community's budget, it can be a very minor thing. And if it triples or doubles or uh, gets moved from year to year in, in ways that you can't control, 
That's a little bit more manageable, but Rhode Island is looking at having to build an entirely new hurricane barrier to defend our capital city from predicted flooding um, that will flood right through the downtown business zone so that existing buildings will, have, will be underwater, not in the upper stories, but their, their front doors should be underwater. The main entrance to City Hall is up a grand staircase. Well, the grand staircase is predicted to flood up to a certain point, so all the operating doors along the sides that people use are, uh, would flood out, and you'd presumably have to arrive at the City Hall of Providence stairs in a boat and climb your way up. So getting that fixed by having a proper hurricane bar barrier is a really big deal. That is gonna be enormously, enormously expensive. And so for small states with huge projects, we have a real uh, problem that I'd like to flag as I, as I close out. Thank you, uh, Chairman. 